These days, it is all but impossible to avoid the subject of sports gambling, and that includes here on ESPN. Last year, this network launched ESPN Bet, our own sports betting app. Back in the 1970s, before ESPN existed, there was a national commission on gambling. At one of its hearings, Pete Rozelle, the NFL commissioner, said this. The NFL is firmly opposed to the concept of legalized gambling on pro football. In our carefully considered judgment, legalized gambling in any form would seriously harm our sport. Now, nearly half a century later, sports wagering is legal in 38 states. And there's an NFL franchise in Las Vegas. It is, in fact, a whole new ball game. Here's part one of our series. As the confetti flies, Super Bowl champion. It is the biggest event in American culture. No good. Wide right. Tyreehu makes the catch. Don't intercept it. Intercept it. Nothing comes close in terms of eyeballs or dollars wagered. 100 or 400? 400. But until recently, if you wanted to bet on the Super Bowl and do it legally, you had to come here. Which is exactly why the NFL and other pro sports leagues wanted nothing to do with Las Vegas. Until now. It's the first Super Bowl in Las Vegas. Right side throw, touchdown! The Kansas City Chiefs, champions of Super Bowl 58. But wait, there's more. Las Vegas will make its mark in the world of college sports. The Frozen Four College Hockey Men's Basketball Final Four will be coming to Las Vegas. All these events in Sin City, once as unlikely as an ice fishing competition in the Everglades. So how did we get here? The future of sports gambling in America is about to change in a big way. In 2018, the Supreme Court overturned the federal ban on sports betting and said any state that wants to offer sports betting can offer it. The 2018 ruling didn't just change where people can bet, it transformed the industry as a whole. It used to be something you did bootleg underground, through Bookie's name, you know, Doc and Jimmy and Crooked Nose Bob. Now it's a legitimate form of entertainment, like going to a game, going to a movie. In the sports betting space is pre-pass vote. About half of Americans believed that uh, it was right to legalize sports. And now we are now five years removed from the decision. It's nearly 75%. This has been the single largest expansion of gambling that our nation has ever undergone. I don't think we can actually comprehend how fast this thing came to fruition. The way that it's being experienced now by most people in the United States, how would you describe that experience for the sports better out there? They have so many options. Um, you know, that's the, that's the beauty of legalization. 15, 20 years ago, you could come out to Las Vegas and that was really the only choice that a consumer had. When you look at today's world, everything's at the touch of their fingertips on their mobile phone or on their computer. It's instant access. It gives someone the ability to just click with the money you have in your account. It's a pretty seamless experience. Obviously the apps will rule the handle, but there's nothing like the social experience meaning the experience of being in a sports book, which are popping up from coast to coast, even inside some sports arenas. People like being in that atmosphere. They want to sweat games with other people. People make a day of it, to say the least. This legalization of sports gambling, how has it changed the way that people bet on sports? What's amazing now is that all the activity is not on the outcome of the game, right? It's all the prop bets of how many yards are going to be thrown. You know, what's the temperature going to be in the Kansas City-Miami game? Let's take a look at a same game parlay that we're going to build together. I'm going to do the first leg. What this means is we combine two or more bets into one within the same game. Same game parlays became something that a lot of operators realized, oh, that's an area 
where our fans are most interested. In the last few years, the proliferation of in-game betting, that's become commonplace. Why do people want to bet in-game? You can be reacting to what's happening in real time. Donovan Edwards racing to the end zone! And feel like you've got an edge, and then again, once you've got you know, skin in the game, it just makes it that much more exciting to watch the rest of it. Ready, set, go. Welcome to day one. Day two. Day three. Day four of the ladder challenge where we try to turn $10 into 10,000 in only 10 days. As sports betting continues to evolve, social media is also riding the wave, attracting the attention of a younger consumer. My name's Austin O'Connell. Uh, I run the Call on Our Shot channel, and what that means is that we give out picks every single day. And uh, we have a large community, whether that's on YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, you name it. The ladder challenge that is this mindset that you're trying to turn $10 into $10,000 in only 10 days. And while it sounds like a pipe dream, the whole purpose of it was, you know, you find your favorite bet on one day. And if that hits on the next day, you roll over all of your winnings. 10 straight picks would turn into a little bit over $10,000. Unlike most in the space, Austin O'Connell has earned enough money through subscribers and sponsorships to have made making picks a full-time job. He now has a total of more than 800,000 followers on his social media accounts. If I give out a normal pick, people might have different opinions about it. But if we're all on one same pick that we're all trying to ride all the way up to 10 grand, it makes the community aspect of it awesome and people are just super engaged on it. Even as the legal sports gambling industry has experienced explosive growth, the old fashioned way of doing business endures. The black market still exists today both in states where gambling is legal and certainly in states where it's illegal. Whether sports gambling was legal or illegal, our concern remained the same, which is we don't want it to have an effect on the outcome or the integrity of any game. It's just because of the proliferation of it, we have a bigger challenge in front of us. In fact, about 40% of Americans reside in states where sports wagering remains largely illegal. But the juggernaut is only picking up speed. And as it does so, the industry continues to break down the barriers that once divided it from the sports establishment. We've moved from a place where, by and large, it was an antagonistic posture among almost all of the leagues to a full bear hug embrace. The fact that during sports shows we're talking about point spreads and prop bets today is just part of the dialogue. Sports betting has put it on steroids, and it's become a way to introduce folks to the product. It's a good fan engagement tool. It's a way for some set of our fans to engage with the game in ways that they hadn't before in a legal way. Right now, sports betting and sports are chocolate or peanut butter. They are completely integrated. In every way they can be intertwined, they are intertwined. Tomorrow on Sports Center, part two of our Outside Line series on sports gambling, John Barr sits down with Isaiah Rogers Sr. Rogers was one of 10 NFL players suspended in 2023 for violating the league's gambling policy.